Hello guys and welcome back to Planet 40k the Necron channel. Now in today's video we're going to be talking about the best Necron cryptic within our index at this moment in time. So it is purely just my opinion of course. We're going to go through the cryptic's abilities, the weapons, as well as how they are going to interact with in terms of the leadership or the leader ability. And at the end of the video we're going to kind of rank them between 1 and 5. And I say 5, I know there are 6. Illuminous Ares I'm going to kind of take out of this equation because it's like one of the guys in the Discord said, it's like comparing apples and oranges. It's Illuminous Ares doesn't quite do the same role as these other Cryptex do. So we're not going to be talking about him today, but there will be a video and a review for Illuminous Ares in due course. In fact, speaking of the Discord, I just want to shout out the Cryptex Council that have been helping me out in some of these videos recently. Now shout your names out, we've got Jartazist Ix, of course, he's everywhere. Jake, Classic, Azazel, Azazel, sorry, Captain Joker, Ink, and Steven, so shout out to you guys, you've been a great help. Now let's get into this video. So the five cryptex that we're going to be talking about in today's video, we've got the Technomancer, the Psychomancer, the Plasmancer, the Chronomancer, as well as Orokin the Diviner, which is our epic hero. Again, we're not going to be talking about Luminazares, we kind of just mentioned why. So first we're going to talk about the common factors between all five of these cryptic models. So the stats to begin. Movement 5, Toughness 4, 4 plus Armor Save, Wounds 4, Leadership 6 plus, and Object Control is 1. All five of the models have that exact same stat line. Some of them will be modified in terms of you know, because of abilities and things like that, but that's what they come with as stock. Another piece of, well, common, I suppose, something else that they've got in common is they've got a unique leader ability. All five of these Cryptex can go with either Immortals, Lich Guard, or Warriors, even if you've got a Royal Warden or a Noble already leading that unit. So you can add them in, and that's going to have their unique interactions and synergy within that unit because you've got two different leaders in there. And also you're going to be able to add the Cryptic roles if you've got a Cryptic Infantry unit within that attached unit, which will apply to all five of these Cryptics today. So we're going to begin this video with the Technomancer. We're going to talk about him first. Now he is 60 points. Now we're not going to go through this with a fine tooth comb, that's what the, what the reviews are for. We're just going to kind of skim through this and do a bit of a mini breakdown. So the main abilities here, rights of reanimation to give the unit a 5 plus 4 no pain save, and you've got the Technomancer ability to heal a friendly Necron unit within 3 inches to, to heal D3 lost wounds. You've got the option then of either the Canoptic Cloak or the Control Node. The Cloak gives the bearer the fly keyword, loan operative, and the movement characteristics of 10. With that one, you've got to be careful because if you remember that if you are putting a unit, if you are putting a leader and a unit together, they will share keywords and you will pass on the fly keyword to the rest of the unit. So if there are any enemy weapons that relate to, you know, a plus one to the hit roll against flying units, perhaps, that will trigger because this entire unit will now have fly, technically. Although they don't have the ability to fly, they're just sharing the keyword. But the other option is the control node. So while canoptic units within six inches, they get a plus one to their hit roll. I've not actually yet tried that ability in 10th edition. I've always gone for the cloak. But yeah, in due course, I will be trying that one out. So these relate to, well, like we already said, the Immortals, the Warriors, and the Lich Guard. Now the 5 plus 4 no pain save is going to work on all three of these units, of course. So they've got their 3 plus or 4 plus armor save, and then a 5 plus on top of that with the 4 no pain, which is going to work nicely with all of them. Not forgetting that the Crypto Thralls will give the Crypto Thralls, as well as the characters, or the Cryptic character, a 4 plus 4 no pain save. Now the Technomancer ability it will work better with Lich Guard because you're only healing. You're not getting three extra reanimation protocols rolls. It's just purely healing D3. So with Warriors and Immortals, they're only one wound model, so you're not going to be getting them up. Of course, you can still apply it to units that are within three inches, but the Lich Guard that will be within three inches if you're leading them. Maybe there's one on one, on one wound and you can just heal that guy up. However, you can also relate this to the Cryptus rolls. If you get one back up and only on one wound, one wound left, you can then use the Technomancer to further heal him in your movement phase, which is kind of cool. Now, for me, the best unit for this Technomancer to lead would be the Lich Guard, and it would be the Lich Guard with the Hyperface Swords and Dispersion Shields. Now, the reason for that is they've already got an invulnerable save, so they don't need Auric and the Diviner, for example. They've already got the invun. So therefore, they're just lacking the Furna Pain save, which this will actually provide you. We already mentioned as well that you can heal wounds with Lich Guard because they've got two wounds, so that's going to be that's going to work well there. And you're not going to be using, for example, a Plasmancer because that relates to range attacks. So you're not going to be. You may use a Chronomancer for the minus one to the hit roll, 
but really it's for the move shoot movability with the chronometron. So you're not really going to use that. And the Psychomancer, well, yeah. We'll leave that one to you because that one isn't really the best of the Cryptex. But yeah, the Lich Guard with the Swords and Shields would, have, would be the best option for the Technomancer to lead. Talking about the weapons for the Technomancer, he's only got the Staff of Light. It's not doing much, unfortunately. Yes, it is three shots. You may get lucky and peel a wound off a model, but realistically, it's just a bit of bonus. It's not going to do you much there. Now, the second unit to talk about today is the Psychomancer. Now, he is only 10 points less. I think it should be a lot less than, than the Technomancer because it's, to be honest, it's not very good. It's not very good. It's sort of Royal Warden level. In fact, it's probably worse than Royal Warden, really. It probably should be about 35 points. Now, the abilities this thing has... You've got the Nightmare Shroud Aura, so enemy units within 9 inches subtract 1 from the leadership. And to stack with that, you've got the Harbinger of Despair. So in the shooting phase, you select one enemy unit within 18, and they must take a Battle Shock test. So of course, if they're within 9 inches and you're going to stack them, you force in Battle Shock, and it's a minus 1 to the leadership. I mean, Battle Shock isn't all, you know, it's not that great, to be honest with you. Because once it's your opponent's turn, they're going to get it back anyway, but... There are some secondary objectives that could relate to it, so it, it does happen, it does help. But realistically, you're not really going to be taking the Psychomancer, especially not when it's 50 points. You've got better options with all four of the other options. Or just don't take one at all and just save the points, I suppose. Now, the best unit to lead for the Psychomancer, I'm going to stick with the, with the Lich Guard with the Swords and Shields. There is a bit of logic to this. If you're using Lich Guard with the Swords and Shields, you're likely trying to bunker down on an objective. It could be in your No Man's Land, it could be in the No Man's Land, or it could be in your home objective. You're likely just trying to stay and survive and hold on to the ground. Now, if you've got a Psychomancer trying to force Battle Shock, potentially your opponent loses objective control, or they just lose the ability to use Stratagems because they've failed Battle Shock. So therefore, they're not going to steal that objective for their secondaries, or they're not going to be able to use Stratagems that will relate to the fight phase perhaps when they're trying to fight our Lich Guard. So that would be the option if I was to ever take a Psychomancer. It would be the Lich Guard with the Sword and Shields. His ranged attack, it looks really good on paper until you see the amount of attacks this thing actually gets. With, with the Abyssal Lance, I call it the Abysmal Lance because it's not that great. Only one attack. Yes, strength 6 minus 3 AP 3 damage, that sounds all great. But with one attack, half a chance of hitting, then you've got to wound likely on a 3+. plus. And if you're very, very lucky, you might pick, you might take a Terminator out, but the chances are you won't. Next, we've got the Plasmancer for 55 points. I quite like the Plasmancer. I've been using it quite a lot so far in Temp Edition. With the two abilities that the Plasmancer has, the Harbinger of Destruction, so un un unmodified hit rolls of a 5+, plus will score a critical hit. That's going to be useful for virtually, well, both types of Immortals, as well as both types of Warriors. With three out of four of those options, you've got the Gorse Weapons, so they're going to be lethal. So 5 plus rolls to hit will be lethal hit, so you don't need to roll to wound. Cool. And with the Tesla option, it'll be a 5 plus, and those Tesla carbines will be literally exploding into two additional hits on a 5 plus rather than a 6 plus. So that's not bad for one of the cryptic abilities. The second one, Living Lightning. In your shooting phase, you select one enemy unit within 18 and visible. You roll a d6 for each enemy unit, or any enemy model in the unit, and for each 6, it's a for a mortal wound. Only really good against hordes. Not so much against standard, you know, if you're going up against a 5-man intercessor unit, you're going to roll 5 dice, maybe you get 1-6, you're not going to remove a model unless you get lucky, I suppose. Whereas if you're going up against 30, I don't know, even know what you're getting in 30s nowadays, even if it was 20 Necron Warriors, we're going up against, you know, ourselves, a mirror match. 20 dice, you're probably going to get 3 to 4 mortal wounds there. So that's, that's the only time you would really use it, is on those large units. But yeah, you don't want to be. You don't need a plasmancer for the Lich Guard because they've got no range attack, so there's absolutely no point. So what would be the best unit for the plasmancer to lead? So this one, I'm, I've kind of put both in here. I put the Necron Warriors as well as the, the Immortals. If I was to actually choose just one of them, ooh, I think I'd go with the Necron Warriors with the Gorse Flayers because you've got the 24 inch range, and then if you've got, if you're within half range, of course you're going to get the rapid fire off. And any 5 plus rolls will just be automatically wounding, even if their toughness 16, it does not matter. Now of course the damage is going to be low, the AP is going to be low. So really it's not doing a lot. But the same would apply to the Tesla Carbines as well, They're not, they've got no AP, it's only 1 damage. So really, you're just looking at smaller stuff, smaller infantry to pick off with these kind of weapons, with this combination in fact. But yeah, I would pick the Warriors and the Immortals. As for the weaponry that the Plasmanza has, the Plasmic Lance I think is actually okay. 
in terms of the cryptic weapons. You get three attacks rather than the one. Okay, it's half a chance of hitting with BS4. Strength 7, minus 3 AP, 2 damage. So you do have a chance of getting maybe one off. Maybe one of your, one, one in two can go. And it's the same statistics for the Plasmic Lance in melee, but it's only two attacks rather than three. You've got a chance of removing a model there. The Chronomancer is next. He's 50 points. I think he's quite cheap, to be honest with you, because... Well, we'll get into the abilities and I'll explain why. So the Time Splitter Mantle. So it's basically a minus one to enemy unit's hit rolls against our unit if he's leading it, which is very similar to one of the enhancements we have, which is the Hyper Material Ablator. That's a minus one. No, it's Stealth, which is effectively minus one. And it's a benefits of cover. So it's very similar to that, that enhancement, and that enhancement is 25 points. So half the value of the entire Chronomancer there. The Chronometer ability is where it's at though, in the shooting phase, after the unit has shot, you can literally move 5 inches, which is pretty cool, so you're going to be able to move, shoot, and move back, whether it's dipping into cover, getting more further down the, the field onto an objective, or just getting out of charge range for your opponent on their next turn. There's lots of different reasons you could be doing that. And then lastly, he's got an invulnerable save of a 4+, plus, which just gives him a lot more value in general. I, I think this guy probably should be 60 points, he's probably a bit cheap to be honest with you, but the other guys are really good. So if you were to put this guy in with Lich Guard, you're not going to do the move shoot move ability of course because they're not shooting, Lich Guard don't shoot, but you're still going to get that minus one to the hit roll on your Lich Guard unit, which is going to be fairly good. You could have one unit of Lich Guard with the Hyper Material Ablator and then a second unit with the Chronomancer potentially, so both units are a minus one to hit. It's a way of doing that. But they are better served with the Necron Warriors, I reckon, probably with the Gorse Reapers, so that you can actually get them into range, and then get them back out of range. I think that's the best way of doing it. The range and melee attacks for the Chronomancer. You've got D6 attacks with this, and it is Blast as well, so you can expect a fair bit of work with the Aeon Stave. Again, it's BS4, Strength 5, minus 1 AP, 1 damage. So with Blast, you're likely going up against Light Infantry anyway. So minus 1 AP, 1 damage is all you really need, and Strength 5 will mean you're wounded on the 3 plus anyway. I think that is one of the better weapons out of all the Cryptic models. I quite like that one, and I also like the, the Plasmic Lance from Plasmans. I think both of them are pretty good. If I had to pick one, I probably would I probably would pick the Chronomancer's weapon with the Aeon Stave. Lastly, we've got Orokin the Diviner, which is our epic hero, our named Cryptic character within our Index. He went from being absolutely crap in 9th edition to being an absolute god in 10th edition. So he's 80 points, he's the most expensive out of all of these guys, by 20 points in fact, because the Technomancer is 60 points. Now of course you can't be putting any enhancements because he's an epic hero, but these are the two abilities that he has. Chronomancer, with well, the Master Chronomancer, gives the unit a 4 plus invulnerable save, which is a madness really. If you get the Lich Guard with the War Scythes that don't have the shields, they, don't got, they ain't got an invun, you put this guy with them, all of a sudden they've got the 4 plus invulnerable save, but they've still got the War Scythes, which is really cool. You're sticking maybe an invulnerable save on your warriors, a 20-man brick, or even a 10-man unit of immortals with toughness 5. Could be a good combination. The stars are right, I think goes under the radar this edition, because you get to select it select when you're doing it this time. So once per battle and start the fight phase, you can hulk up. And if it does, you're tripling the attacks and the strength characteristics of your staff of tomorrow. And every successful wound roll made for the model's attack scores a critical wound. Now, in fact, we're going to talk about the weaponry more in a moment, but that is a really cool ability. We'll get onto that in a minute. So the best unit for Orca the Divine to lead, in my opinion, would be the Lich Guard and the War Scythes, not the Sword and Shield. They've already got an Invun with Orca the Diviner. They don't need another one. So having the Strength 8 minus 4 AP, 2 damage War Scythes with an Invulnerable save could be really good. You could use the Warriors with the Warrior Brick. I probably wouldn't bother with the Immortals. I don't think it's necessary. But yeah, the Lich Guard with the War Scythes is the one I'd go for. Now the melee weapon, they don't, it doesn't have any ranged weapons unfortunately, but the melee weapon is the Staff of Tomorrow. You only get two attacks with it, web skill 3 plus, strength 4 minus 3 AP and D3 damage, but don't forget the Stars are right ability, you are tripling the amount of attacks and tripling the strength for that one fight phase. So that all of a sudden becomes six attacks with strength 12. Now if you also remember, any successful wound roll will cause a critical wound. So it's almost like you're borrowing a 60 wound, but from any of them. So if you are strength 12 and you're going up against toughness 6, for example, a 2 plus will score a critical wound. And look at the actual keyword, he's got devastating wounds, which means no invulnerable saves. It goes straight through armor save, straight through in save. It's a devastating wound and it's D3 times, it's D3 damage. And because they are mortal wounds, they will be able to spill onto other models within the unit. 
So when you've got six attacks, you're likely getting five hits. Whip skill three plus, you might get maybe three. Strength 12, minus 3 AP and D3 damage, which is likely going to be Devastating Wounds. So yeah, he can literally be the difference between taking out a unit that's trying to annihilate your Lich Guard, and not really. I would always hulk up when you see an opportunity. So yeah, the best unit to lead for me would be the War Scythes, as mentioned with the Lich Guard. So that is our five Cryptex. Now it is time to rank them in order, and this is just my opinion, of course. Now I did do a bit of back and forth in the Discord. I had a completely different order just 24 hours ago and I've, I've, I've finally amended it and I'm, I'm quite happy with it now I'm quite happy with it so in fifth place we probably would have guessed this already but it's going to be the Psychomancer the Psychomancer you're not picking it you just don't need to pick it all four of the other options are better it, there's just absolutely no need to pick it in my opinion so I'm just going to kind of move on and go from there so on to number four we've got the Plasmancer now I was really reluctant to put him as number four because I've been using it quite a lot recently especially with my Silver Tide Necron Warriors, but I've kind of come to the realization that if you're playing Warriors, you're looking to survive, so therefore you don't really need to do the. I mean, it's not doing much damage anyway. Lethal hits, yes, is nice, but one damage isn't doing a lot. So, therefore, if you are trying to survive, you've got better options Tetmancer, Oracle, the Divine, and the Chronomancer. All three of those would be much better served with Warriors. So, for me, he's going to be going at number four. Number three, I've gone with the Chronomancer. The cheap, well, one of the cheaper ones. In fact, he is the cheaper one, isn't he? Is he the cheapest? Let me just double check what that Psychomancer was because I forgot. One, two, three. You... Wow. I can't believe the Chronomancer and the Psychomancer were the same price, guys. 50 points each. But yeah, getting that minus one to the hit roll could potentially save you on getting that enhancement. And then you get the move, shoot, move. You could pair him with the Royal Warden so that you can actually advance. Or just use the Protocol of Sudden Storm to gain assault on your weapons and then you can still advance anyway, shoot, then move back. But yeah, the Chronomancer has a lot of uses if you're going to be more aggressive and you're trying to get into the No Man's Land as early as possible. Potentially would use him on Immortals, but I think Warriors have a much more, they're much better at surviving, they're much more durable once you start taking Ghost Arcs and things like that. Number two, this one got flipped literally last minute. And I've gone with number two is Orokin the Diviner. Now for Orokin the Diviner, I really like that 4 plus in Wonderful Save. I think it's really, really strong. But I kind of come to the realisation that... Yes, a 5 plus Feel No Pain save from the Technomancer is a worse save. It's a 5 plus rather than a 4 plus. But you are still getting your regular armour save beforehand. So even if it's a minus 1 AP on your Necron Warriors... That's going to be a 5 plus armor save and then a 5 plus Bruno pain save. Whereas with Orokin the Diviner, that invulnerable save is literally going to overwrite their armor save. So you're only getting the one save rather than the two. Now I do like the hulking up ability with the stars are right. I think that is really cool. But the Technomancer's got a lot more to him. You can heal. You could be healing models and all that kind of stuff. So that is in fact my number one choice, of course, if you haven't worked it out already. The Technomancer. I like that idea of having a 5 plus Bruno pain save. It's going to work on all three of these models that it can be leading. It's going to be healing a model within three inches D3 lost wounds. So that could be a ghost arc. It could be a reanimator. Probably don't need it on a reanimator to be honest. Because you're going to get double reanimation protocols there. It could be the Silent King. Whatever you're bringing this thing can literally heal it D3. I like the fact that it's also got the lone operative ability. So even if you didn't want to put it in a unit. You could stick it in a ghost arc. Instead of taking a Hexmark Destroyer. Because you need to have your ghost arc full before you deploy. And if you didn't want to take 10 Necron Warriors, because, well, who does that really at the moment? I think 20 is much better. You can stick the Technomancer in there. He's got Lone Operative. He can fly and heal. Might be the cheaper way to do it, although a Hex might destroy it is also very good. So, yeah, guys, that is my top five cryptic models within the current Necrons Index. Do you agree with my top five? Or do you agree with my five? Let me know your five in the comments down below. Put them in one, two, three, four, five in the comments. And we'll kind of do a bit of a comparison to your... Well, your, your ratings, I suppose. But guys, yeah, that's all I've got for you today. Remember to subscribe on your exits if you found this video interesting. Thank you for watching. See you in the next one.